Hello everybody and welcome back to a long overdue new episode of Crossroads Rebuild where we're going to introduce a brand new build here. I wanted to start this video out though real quick and saying first of all this episode was recorded many months ago. You're going to see it. You can see behind me it's kind of snowy and ugly out. It's winter. Well, the episode you're about to see was actually recorded months ago when it was still very nice out. And it was actually about this car behind me. So you'll see more about that coming soon. Uh, I did want to mention though, before this video gets started, that as I'm getting back into the swing of things and getting into my builds and making videos, I'll explain what's going on more uh, coming up, what we have coming in the future as well. Uh, but I did want to just get back to making some videos. So I've already recorded several videos on this car as well as a few other things, some builds that we're continuing that you've already seen from a while back. Uh, but I wanted to introduce this video and at least say, hey, I am back. Uh, thank you for joining me. I apologize I've been gone so long. I'm looking forward to being back with you. I hope you'll jump right back in with me and pick up where we left off. So without further ado, Here's the next build on Crossroads Rebuild, and uh, I'll go ahead and now roll the introduction to that video. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven, and it's so good to be here with you today. Thank you for joining me. Well, today is a good day because today is a new project day. And as you can see over my shoulder, there we go, nice motorcycle rev. As you can see over my shoulder, I've got a kind of wrecked red Lincoln MKZ hybrid. All right, there's a little story behind why I'm rebuilding this car and I'll get into that a little bit later. But the fun part is I don't just have this one wrecked Lincoln MKZ hybrid. I have two and actually, yeah, there's a third. That one's not a hybrid, that's a regular one. But I have three wrecked Lincoln MKZs. So what's the story here? Well, the story is basically this. I have a lot of hobbies. Actually, Erica would say I have enough hobbies for two or three people, and she might be right. But in addition to a bunch of hobbies, I also have a bunch of side hustles. I have uh, three or four jobs going right now, if you include this YouTube thing, which really doesn't make me much money, so maybe we shouldn't count it. But I do have several jobs, several side hustles, and one of them, one of my more recent ones, does require a lot of driving, and my daily driver has been the F-150 that we rebuilt last year. Well, that thing gets terrible gas mileage. It wasn't built for gas mileage, was it? It was built to haul stuff and to move a lot of people and a lot of stuff, and it's fantastic at that job. But as far as getting good gas mileage for uh, around town type stuff, it wasn't built for that, and it is no good at it. So I picked up this red, 2011 Lincoln MKZ hybrid at auction for about 800 bucks. Um, fun thing about this car is even though it is wrecked, good and wrecked actually, uh, even though it is wrecked, it's still a clean title car. So what I decided to do since I got this car so cheap, and I got it cheap not only partly because it's wrecked, but it's also a higher mileage car, but that's okay because again, this is not gonna be a road warrior going up and down the interstate uh, cross country. This is just an around town car so the higher mileage doesn't concern me. Got it cheap, clean title, so I don't have to go through the whole rebuild process with titling and all that. And then I picked up these other two cars as parts cars. Here's the crazy part about it. All three of these cars are all clean title cars. I have no idea how that happened, and I certainly didn't set out to buy all clean title cars. I bought the first one because I was enticed partly by the low price and the clean title. Uh, the other ones just happen to be that way. So I'm going to go ahead and jump start the car. It's got a dead battery, not the hybrid battery, the regular little battery under the hood. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing jump started, take it into the driveway so I can show you around it a little bit, show you everything that's wrong with it. Then I'll tell you a little bit about my parts cars, and then we may as well just get to work tearing this thing apart. Let's get going. All right, well, if you're going to jump start your car, it pays to make sure that your uh, jump box is all charged up. Mine wasn't. So I went and got a spare battery, did it the old fashioned way, a pair of jumper cables. It's now running. Uh, hybrids, when they start up, or at least the Ford based ones, are totally silent. They start in off mode effectively, electric only. Uh, so I gave it a little gas to get the uh, gas engine started. So it's now working on keeping the car running and I should be able uh, to drive it over. On another note, Talk about overkill much. There's my hood prop. Hey, it gets the job done, right? Use what you got. 
anyway i'm gonna go ahead and unhook this and we'll take the car to the driveway finally all right i think it's still running uh it did die out when i unhooked the battery so i'm gonna go ahead and leave that hooked up for now but there we go yeah it's still running so i'm gonna like super carefully try to drive this over to the driveway let's see what happens hopefully we don't have a big catastrophe here All right, and as you can see, we did make it. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that hooked up for a little while, uh, see if the car will uh, get a little energy in that battery. I'll probably end up replacing it. Actually, parts car over there has a good battery, so I may just take that one. Again, I'm trying to do this one on the cheap. Anyway, now that I have the car in the driveway, uh, let's take a moment to do a quick walk around. I am gonna leave the hood open since I've got the battery uh, hooked up, but we may as well start there. As you can see, yeah, the hood's pretty well shot, as are my hood hinges. Uh, they're jacked up as well. Sadly, this hood also hit the windshield. But looking at that, I mean, if you see where that is, this hood has to open all the way to hit that. I bet you that this windshield was fine in the accident and uh, somebody goofed and opened it too far and smashed that windshield. Anyway, so I am gonna have to put a new windshield in it. Obviously, I've lost the left uh, driver's side uh, headlight there. Uh, I think passenger side one is good, uh, although we'll take a closer look at that. Grills are bad, bumper cover shot, missing a fog light, broken trim, broken core support through here, and no doubt also, yeah, messed up fan, got messed up radiator, condenser, all that stuff bad in there. Um, however, the car is straight it did not get down in here into uh, the crash bar. So, pretty sure I should be able to just unbolt everything and just bolt on donor parts and everything should be good. Of course, I know a guy uh, who can fix that if it's not, but I'm pretty sure we can take care of that pretty easily. Thankfully, fender's good on the uh, passenger side. No problem there, although I'm missing a wheel cap cover. I don't know what happened there. And then, uh, unfortunately, over here, I do have a bad fender here. So obviously I've lost a mirror over here. And if you can see uh, on the other side over there, uh, that one's smashed and is missing its cover. Actually, uh, the mirror that came off on the driver's side is there in the back seat, uh, but I do have it. So there's that, but it's no good. It's totally trashed. Now moving down along here, I mean, it shows signs of wear and tear, but it's fine along the sides. Uh, and then back here, I'm not sure how this happened. Uh, because obviously this was a front end collision. Maybe they got bumped into again, uh, but we did have a little bit of damage to this trunk lid and then tail light and bumper cover got broken. Now everything works, trunk opens just fine. Uh, the rear sensors, the camera, everything works, uh, but it did get damaged. So that's where the red parts car over there comes in because I can take the rear end parts off of that, slap it on here. Uh, but it didn't mess up anything over here. This side is straight. This side is straight all the way up to uh, the fender. So the fender's good, mirrors bad, and then of course the bumper. So all in all, not in too bad a shape. We did not blow any airbags in there, no seat belt locked up, uh, although it does have a, uh, an airbag light on. So I am gonna have to look into why that's on. Um, maybe it, I don't know how it could trip a crash sensor without actually blowing any bags, but we'll get that all figured out. All right, so that is the car that we're going to rebuild. Let's talk just a moment about the donor cars. Donor car number one, the red car. That is a 2012 non-hybrid, so it has a, I think a 3.5 V6 in it. Um, that one actually has what's called the executive package. So it has a slightly upscale interior, slightly better leather, a little more wood. Uh, and that might be about it, honestly. There's not a lot to that package. Uh, but otherwise it has uh, the other packages that this one has like blind spot monitoring um, and the adaptive headlights and all of that stuff. Um, so that car is the donor for the rear end, trunk lid, brake light, and the rear bumper. That car was hit primarily in the front, but it also got clipped uh, or spun or something into the passenger side rear uh, and took out the quarter panel. It did bend the bumper over there, uh, scuffed it a little bit, but it looks okay to me. So I am hopeful that I should be able to use that bumper without any problem. 
I need to do a little bit of light repair to it, I will, uh, but it's in better shape than the bumper that's on here that has a massive crack in it. Uh, so my plan is to use that bumper, trunk lid, and tail light. So that's the red car, and I got that one dirt cheap uh, because it's, it's a non-runner. I think, looking at the damage, that I could probably make it run. And I think I'm gonna try, we'll probably do a video about that. Tell me if you wanna see a video uh, just trying to get that car running, uh, running and driving. Uh, I think I can, and if I can, it'll make it worth more when I try to sell it uh, when we're done. But in any case, that car is the donor for uh, the rear end. The front end donor is the white car. Now, I tried to find cars that were all red. I would have had a fleet of three red MKZs, ideally. Um, the red is not the most common color. There's a lot of white, gray, black, silver, uh, a lot of those, not many in this uh, candy red. I don't know exactly what they call it, but it's a candy, a candied red. Anyway, so I did not find a car uh, at an affordable price with a red, uh, that was red for my front end donor, which is a shame. Anyway, that one is also a 2012, that one is a hybrid. Uh, so it has all the parts I need. If there's anything mechanical on this par on this car uh, that needs to be replaced, it's not accident related, should be able to get it from that car. That one was obliterated in the rear end. It is a terrible rear end accident, um, but it's run and drive. It rubs just a little bit in one of the rear wheels, but it's run and drive, only 100,000 miles on the car and uh, is in pretty good shape. A little bit of damage where a corner is broken off the front bumper, but it's still there, it's still hanging on. Uh, so when I get that bumper off of there, obviously it has to be painted anyway and prepped for that. So I'm gonna repair that corner. It'll be good as new. Uh, and other than that, I've got good headlights, grills, all that stuff, uh, core support, uh, all sorts of good parts there on that car. Uh, so I'll be able to use uh, the whole front end off of that one. It's also got the same color interior. So if I need anything from there, um, I should be able to take it directly from that car. We'll talk a little bit more about interiors at the end of the video. Anyway, I've talked to you enough about uh, what I've got going here, the car we're fixing, the two donors that we have. I think this video needs a little bit of actual work. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up and I'm gonna get right to work tearing this car apart. I guess I should unhook that battery. Don't know if I got any more charge or not, but we're gonna go ahead and unhook that battery and just get right to work tearing this car apart so that we can put it back together. Let's go. Alrighty guys, and there we go. The front bumper and grills are off. I apologize, it's pretty windy out here, so you know, if it gets loud, I apologize. But uh, anyway, here we go. Here is the first look at the front end uh, without the bumper on there. And uh, my initial thoughts are not too bad, although we do have a little bit of a push on this bar here. Uh, so it shouldn't be too bad, but let's get a little more of this stuff off and then we'll take a closer look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the headlights off and some of this miscellaneous other small stuff out of the way uh, so that we can start getting to some of the bigger stuff like the core support, the radiators, etc. All right, so I got the headlights out and I was just getting ready to start uh, taking the uh, radiator support apart, all the pieces of it out. Um, and I wasn't gonna stop for an update, but remember I told you it's got a check in, not a check engine, a, um, an airbag light on, even though none of the airbags or seatbelts deployed. So these things up front here are your crash sensors. And on Fords, there's generally two of them in the front. Uh, here's the other one. And uh, I'm thinking that is probably why there's an airbag light on, because that sensor has been obliterated and uh, is totally missing. But that leads me to the question, if you can totally obliterate the crash sensor in the accident, but not set off the airbags, what the heck does it take to actually set the airbags off? I mean, am I crazy? I don't, I don't get it. I mean, should be theoretically a simple fix here uh, just to swap in a sensor from uh, one of the parts cars, but I don't get it. Anyway, hey, if any of you understand how the crash sensor system on uh, 
well, a Ford vehicle uh, works. And when it actually decides to set off the airbags versus not, let me know. Drop it in the description or, or in the comments rather, or send me an email or something. I'm genuinely curious. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and keep tearing this apart. Just thought I'd stop for that quick uh, update and rant. Anyway, let's keep going. folks well we've got a nice pile of parts going on here got our hood bumper cover crash bar uh, radiator support and headlights out and we are now down to the radiators now I don't want to unhook any of that because I am not ready to make a mess yet but we can see uh, a little bit better the extent of the damage under here I'm thinking this is some sort of oil cooler or it's a hybrid so maybe it's got it's a battery cooler I'm not sure uh, obviously condenser, regular radiator, obviously both uh, really obliterated there. Uh, you can see it was uh, not in the healthiest of condition and really nasty in there, so it wasn't super efficient. Check this out. One of the bolts that holds, I don't even know what, something to the core support literally pierced the air conditioning condenser. So uh, yeah, it took, a, it took a bit of a hit. Uh, our crash bar here, let's take a peek at this real quick. Uh, this is actually the passenger side here. Uh, so we're looking at it kind of backwards, uh, but you can see it's bent up a little bit there. Not terrible, but uh, a little bit. So I think when I put the uh, donor one on, I'm gonna have to take a look at it and just see how things line up. Uh, looking at this, eyeballing this, I'm not seeing a problem with our rails they look straight to me tell me what you think there but they seem straight so uh hopefully all that's good to go and uh you know there's a few things bolted on here to the top of the core support those are all unbolted really next step from here is uh to take these radiators and coolers and fans because the fan is in there somewhere it's pretty well messed up the only other damage i can find here is uh, besides, <clears throat> excuse me, besides this fender here, which, <coughs> pardon me, besides this fender here, which we already knew was damaged, I have to take that off, um, right here on uh, the apron. This has bent just a little bit, but that'll bend back real easy, just a little heat, and I should be able to pull that back myself. Um, and then that air box might be damaged, battery box is damaged. Uh, again, all of that stuff, though, is available on the donor car. Check this out, though. I'm going to stop trying to use this battery, because <laughs> look at this. Sun's gonna get in our eyes. That battery is bent, just crinkled in. So uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and unhook that battery here and uh, stop messing with that. So got a lot of progress made and I hate to waste daylight because there is still some daylight left, but I have somewhere I've gotta be here pretty soon. So I'm gonna have to cut it off here for uh, this evening and uh, apologize the neighbor decided now was a good time to start mowing his lawn. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to cut it off here for this evening, and I'll pick up with you tomorrow in the morning. Well, good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful morning. The birds are singing. A little bit of a Christmas crispness, not Christmas, crispness to the air, and I'm ready to get back to work on the MKZ. Yesterday, got pretty much the whole front end torn down. I'm going to leave all of the radiators and all of that on there for now. Uh, so that I don't lose any more fluids than necessary until I'm ready to start putting things back together. So where I'm going to go ahead and pick up from is getting this front fender off. The driver's side fender needs to come off uh, because it is damaged. Uh, hood hinges. The unfortunate thing is the hood hinges are kind of underneath the fenders. Um, I really don't need to take the fender off on the passenger side, but I may have to uh, just to get the hood hinge off. So I'll mess with that and see if I can get it off without taking the fender off. But in any case, I'll get the passenger fender off, hopefully the hood hinges, and then I'm actually gonna work my way to the back, get that bad tail light and the bumper off of there as well. And that's what I'm hoping to get accomplished this morning. So with that being said, I'm just gonna go ahead and get right to work. Let's keep going. <music>
guys got that fender off. Uh, forgot that there was a bolt in here, or a nut rather, so I made it a little harder than it needed to be. But other than that, pulling a fender off of a Ford, you know, the MKZ is basically a Fusion. So pulling the fender off of a Fusion, not that difficult. You may recall, if you've been watching the channel for a while, uh, that my very first rebuild was an 07 Fusion. And kind of underneath, they're more or less the same. Now, got both hood hinges off. That one obviously was quite easy. This one's more challenging. I did end up loosening up all the top bolts, the one inside the door frame, and this one so that I could get enough room to get in there. Uh, but once I did that, I was able to get in there and it was fine. So that's all taken care of. And I'll, uh, well, I have to do it again when I put the new uh, hood hinges in. Anyway, with all that being said, we're ready to move on to the rear here. And um, my goal for today to wrap up this video is to go ahead and get the bumper off and the tail light out. Actually, you have to take both tail lights out to get the bumper anyway. So that's what I'm gonna start with, is uh, removing that tail light, and then uh, of course doing the rest to get that bumper off, and it shouldn't be too, too bad. So I'm gonna put you guys back on the time lapse and keep going. guys and that is the back end disassembled both tail lights out as you can see the driver's side one of course is bashed up it does still work but uh, of course the red lens is gone um, three bolt or three nuts on the back and uh, two electrical connectors and it pops right out same on that side there's a little bit of disassembling to get to it but not much uh, the bumper's not hard either uh, you've got uh, just a series of uh, push clips, a screw in each corner, another screw up here underneath the tail light on each corner, which is why you have to take the tail lights out if you want to take the bumper off. And honestly, in my opinion, <laughs> the hardest part of the whole thing was getting the electrical stuff not unplugged from, you've got three uh, backup sensors and of course you've got your um, uh, license plate lights. It's not hard to get them unplugged, but <laughs> they've got these little push clips that hold them in there. And those are a little bit of a challenge to uh, get out of the uh, retainers. Anyway, it is out now. And uh, with all of that off of there, it does look like we may have a slightly tweaked uh, trunk opening. So I may have Jack just pull that out just a little bit. So when we put our new trunk lid on, it'll line up properly. But crash bar looks fine. Everything else looks fine. Um, and I am going to leave this uh, trunk lid on for now uh, because I'm not ready, of course, to put the donor one on. So uh, that'll keep everything sealed up until then. So anyway, that is, I think, everything we're gonna work on for today. Anyway, guys, with all that being said, there is one more thing I wanna ask you about today, and that is the interior of this car. Now, the car is, like I said, high mileage, and, well, here, let me turn the camera around. So the car is high mileage, but, you know, it's okay. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Like I said, this is just a beater uh, for my around town stuff. It's a little bit beat up few little nicks, tears, so on and so forth. Both front seats, actually, um, this one's a little bit worn. It's actually not so bad. It's, it's worn, but it's not so bad. Passenger seat has a tear in it. But the worst thing about it all, because all that'll clean up, the worst thing about it all is how it smells. And I wish, you know, I've heard people say it in videos before, I wish you could have smell-o-vision. Yeah, I wish you could. Because when this thing is closed up for any length of time, the stench of cigarettes permeates oh it's disgusting you open it up and it just hits you like a wall um so there's that now i know there's things i can do to, to to kind of mitigate that obviously a good deep cleaning um cleaning the carpets trying my best to clean the headliner so on and so forth that being said the white car that we're going to use for the front end donor has the exact same interior 
So, and it smells fantastic. Only 100,000 miles on that car. It smells really good. Pretty sure it was owned by some older folks. They took really good care of it, um, kept it clean, and it smells great. <clears throat> and it's exactly a match. So I could just pull out the seats, pull out the carpet, you know, even the headliner, just swap it all over. Two concerns with that, and I'll show you a little bit of video footage here. The front passenger seat is the worst. A little bit on the, uh, on the, on the uh, back seat as well but it looks like some paint exploded in the car at some point and got in the seats. They're not torn, they're not in bad shape in that way, um, but they are stained up with some white paint. I haven't tried, it's possible it may clean up a little bit, um, and so that would be a possibility to try that, and then I could just swap them over. The other thing is, uh, these cars are great. The Fusion didn't offer this, but this being the high-end version, the Lincoln, uh, they have heated and cooled seats. They do work on this, but, um, in the donor car, the cooled seats work, but the heated seats, the factory heat doesn't work, but somebody spliced in some sort of aftermarket heated seats. It's a minor thing, I suppose, but it kind of rubs me the wrong way. I like to keep things as OEM as possible, at least when it comes to the under the hood, you know, behind the scenes kind of electricals and stuff like that. So with that being said, we've got a good smelling, decent interior, but it's got paint stains on two of the seats. And then we got that weird thing with the heated seats going on. And this is Indiana, so I want the heated seats to work properly. This car, on the other hand, stinks, but everything works. One other option is the interior from the rear end donor car, the red car. That one, like I mentioned before, has the executive package, which means it's got slightly nicer leather. It's got a little bit more wood on the dash and all that, but it's a different color. So if I did that one, it would have to be a 100% interior swap, all the seats, headliner, the dashboard, door cards, all of that would have to be swapped. Um, the other thing is, it's got a different steering wheel and it did blow the steering wheel airbag. So I'd have to buy an airbag and it also deployed the driver's uh, seat belt. So I'd have to get that rebuilt. So I'd have to do a complete interior swap and fix the, or replace the airbag and fix the seat belt. But it's a nicer interior, depending on your preference on color. Um, it's a nicer interior, nicer leather and all that. Uh, but it's a lot more work. That car only has like 89,000 miles. So you tell me, what do you think I should do? What would you do in my situation? So anyway, guys, with that being said, give me your thoughts below. I appreciate you joining me for this episode. I've got plenty more coming. I got a few more episodes on this car, of course. Uh, and then I've got stuff coming on the black BMW. We've got the BMW convertible, the 335 IS. I've got a whole bunch of other stuff coming, including some stuff I haven't even told you guys about yet that I'm excited about. Happy to be back working on cars here. Looking forward to the next one. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.